stuff like that. Even the hoops, you get close and they get scared. And they go, whoop, whoop. You hear that. No. All of a sudden you hear that. Then that means like, oh, shit, you know. And they take off. You, you, people hear like a uh, bulldozer walking through, the, you know, crawling through the woods. You know, that, that's all you hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's always just kind of fascinated me the way that they can they can go through a thick area so stealthily that you can't hear them make a damn noise and then if they decide that they don't care it sounds like a damn bulldozer going through the woods yeah if it's you know these these things are meant to um get your attention these uh your reaction to it mm -hmm. if you don't run away by then or you don't back off then all these uh you know, it's going to rain hellfire on you. That's, <laughs> that's not what's going to happen. And that's, you know, if, if you know, one thing that I was thinking about, um, I was reading a, another friend's um, um, post. And uh, I guess a person got uh, their arms chewed off, bit off or something like that. And um, I read about it. Oh, are you talking the about person, the, the guy that was the runner that... Um, sort of fell, got hurt. He was stuck on this ledge, yeah. and then he got like his forearm bitten off. Yeah, yeah. That's that, actually that story's been around for a few years. It's not brand new, but it's really horrifying. Yeah, that's you know people wanting to know you know why why did it leave the the person mm -hmm. in kind of like intact but only take the arm. You walk up onto. Um, any animal and you scare it you get startled the first thing is going to re to re how it's going to react is it's going to bite and to me the way it looked like it that's that's what it did it just got startled it bit and it made sure it made a point it bit it it bit off its forearm and kept it well the other one was you know intact god it, it was just it the the husting just got scared just just it, maybe it was sleeping maybe it was just dozing off right there all of a sudden this runner runs up behind it or something like that yeah and here uh you know the the reaction to that you know it's just just it's, right there yeah get your arm bit off well from what i understand yeah. from the original version when it came out the person that had this happen to them didn't write the story the person that wrote the story claimed it was one of their friends who refused to come forward so take it with a grain of salt it may not be a true story anyway uh-huh yeah that's just the way i understood it on on my side see that's the reason why um when somebody asks me to you know kind of look into it I give my version, right. the way that I, you know, read it, and I based everything on 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 what I seen, what I heard, what I went through, and how even the animals out here, you know, how they react to the common reactions that uh, these animals have. You know, you walk behind, walk behind a horse that people never walk behind. What is it? What is it going to do? It's going to kick you. Yeah, you know stuff like that. It's just a you know natural reaction. And if you, uh, I've done that a lot of times, which my dog would be asleep, and then I would creep up to it, and just shake him real hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's gonna do. You know, first jump thing he's five gonna, feet in the air. <laughs> he's gonna jump up, and he's gonna, he's gonna, you know. Bring out those fangs and show them to me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always fun. Well, hey, um, another thing I'd like to bring up before I forget about it again, and this is like one of my favorite little side projects to look into besides the uh, the Bigfoot thing. I'm also interested in microfoot. Would you be interested in talking about the little people? The little people. I had one incident. Uh, the the more the there's the like the three footer mm -hmm. and the one footer. Okay, so you got two there kinds of little people. Might be in yeah. What do you have separate names for them? These. Um, 
uh, I've asked my um, my uh, uncle on this one, and he says the the three footers are just called uh, the like just like the common Anasazi. Uh-huh. Um, the majority of them are white, and um, that's that's one thing that I um, you know, <laughs> when I see it, I just shoot. I'm not going to go close to that one because those those are more cannibalistic than the, the these big ones. Oh my God! So the little <laughs> three foot ones are the are the scary ones. It's like uh, land yeah. going land going piranhas with fur on or something. Yeah, <laughs> they're the ones to keep away. They'll 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 be the one to steal you and take you apart. Good God! And then the little one, I seen it uh, just just once. Like I said, just uh, seen it once. Mm-hmm. I've heard them, but I've only seen them once. And that one was uh, uh, about a year ago. Um, I was laying on the bed by myself, and um, I put my, um, I lay my head on my um, arm, and I kind of sleep on in the fetal position. So I don't know why I do that, but I, I lay like that. <laughs> and not, not... <laughs> I don't have my thumb in my mouth, though. <laughs> I promise but, um, you, I was not picturing that. <laughs> <laughs> and here, uh, um, I just felt something grab onto my thumb. And uh, I opened my eyes and looked to where my thumb was as I had my head on my arm. And this thing, a small, small man walked up crawled up it wasn't it didn't really twist my arm it just grabbed onto my thumb like it was you know just a branch or something climbing on a tree it made its way up stood right there right in front of where a little way it stepped over my hand and i looked at it i'd say for about maybe five seconds and it grinned at me, showed its teeth with its big eyes and then did his hair on it. And he took back off down below, down under the bed. And it made it it's all that scuffling noise along the, the wall where I guess it came from and all of that. And I was like, whoa, you know, I was I was I kinda like woke up, looked that way, but it was dark. So, you know, at least it, it got out of the house. That's what I thought. I laid there for a little while, just hearing it, hearing for it, but nothing. The next morning, I woke up, and I thought about it. Okay, where did that thing come out? Did I just see something that I'd never seen before? So I looked all over the place, and when I went into my closet area, there was a big hole in there about the size of uh, maybe 8 inches by 4 inches. It had not uh, a hole through my um, uh, drywall, wow. and it climbed in from there, and it went back in there. I kind of lifted the, the the one of the drywalls and looked, and then here's there's a hole about maybe three feet from where that hole was, and that's where I guess it had climbed up. Huh. And that, that hole on the other side, I'm assuming that was about maybe three inches round or something like that. Do you have uh, uh, legends about these guys, too, in uh, the Navajo culture? Uh, not really. That one came from somewhere. Did he have, old... like, shark-looking teeth? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, was he wearing clothes? Teeth? No. Okay. It, it... It, it was uh, the only part where I didn't really see anything was kind of like in the groin area. Mm-hmm. Was he furry like a squatch or just like looked like a human, a little bitty human? Uh, just looked like a human. Wow. Yeah, the uh, the little people from uh, Wyoming uh, are supposed to be like between a foot, foot and a half tall, um, have shark-like teeth, 100% carnivorous, ridiculously strong. Um, yeah, and use poison weapons. Um, so <clears throat> have a very, very, very bad reputation. So interestingly enough, the smaller the cryptids get, the more dangerous they seem to get. 
It's just the opposite of what you'd think. The really gigantic ones where you might be able to just, uh, you know, walk past them and they won't do anything. But the little ones are really scary and probably want to eat you. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, what did you think when you saw that little sucker? Randy? Yeah, I was just getting a bite to eat. <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought they had hauled you away there for a second. I'm like, oh my god, they got him. I distracted him <laughs> too long. The little people nabbed him. <laughs> but yeah, I got, they, got, they got some interesting uh, uh, outlooks in uh, central Wyoming about these little people, and you're pretty much describing what uh, Pedro from the San Pedro Mountains uh, looked like. Which is like, you know, uh, in his case, he was probably 18 inches standing up. He was mummified. But uh, he uh, had shark like teeth and looked like he was a nasty little carnivore. And then the local natives there ascribed uh, like superhuman strength to him also. There was a legend about somebody who shot a, an elk and was trailing it and dropped it right in its tracks. And he finally came out in this clearing. And on the far side of the clearing was his elk laying down, but yet moving. And when he got a little closer, you could see it was one of these little guys had the elk's head over its shoulder and was dragging it across the ground like it was nothing. Yeah. So I don't know if you, I know you got uh, friends, family, and or relatives up in that area, if you've heard anything specific from them about it. But that's just the general sort of stuff that's around this area. And, uh, you know, in Montana and then down into Wyoming is that there's, some places that have these little people living in them and they seem to be way more feared by the locals than uh, Bigfoot or something like that would be. That's, um, there's a lot of them where these old buildings are at down here. You mean uh, like the, the old uh, Anasazi ruins that were abandoned? Is that what you're talking about? No, the, the old uh, BIA buildings, these government buildings. Okay, made, okay. Made out of sandstone. They're, uh, you know, how the, the under, underneath of it, underneath all that, um, the buildings, they have like uh, spaces, like uh, uh, pillars that hold up the floor. And these things make their way in there. And those were the ones that were uh, scaring the little kids when they were in the boarding schools. And also they would be the ones to from what I heard from certain uh, people that went to the, the this local uh, boarding school, they would uh, kind of chew off a little bit of uh, skin, those. And then uh, the doctors would say that, you know, there would be lesions or lepers or, or stuff like that. They would, it was just, you know, just little bites here and there. God. And, um, that's what, you know, kind of surprised me, but they would scream real loud also. And these uh, boys would always tell about it and all of that. So anybody that went to boarding school, they know about all the screams, the little pitter patter of feet at night, either on top of the building or um, in the inside where uh, they go to sleep, Jeez. You know, all the wings. They, they know about it. So, you know, that's, that's one thing that, uh, you know, they kind of moved away from. And nowadays, I don't think there's, there's hardly anybody that have uh, boarding schools down here where all the kids, they used to come together and all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one thing that I've noticed also, these things were hanging around little kids <sighs> and they would, uh, as for me, when I went to the boarding school, that was, you know, one thing. One person would run inside a, uh, where, you know, they would call it like the activity room where it was whole, everybody went to watch TV. Mm -hmm. And one person would run in there and say, hey, you know, there's a little guy over here. And everybody take off that way. And um, along the way, the dormitory aide would chase most of them back and you know try and catch this little thing while it was running around it was real fast and it crawled in back in somewhere it had a hole somewhere and we tried to um, 
have it plugged up or we would have a towel in it. If the towel moved, then that thing was coming up. Mm-hmm. And then people would throw their shoes that way. <laughs> that was one thing that, that was scared them too. <laughs> and there's nothing, uh, nothing more scary than uh, a person that was going to boarding school. That was the thing back then. So, you know, we, we've, we've come up with stuff to uh, kind of deter them also, you know, just like throwing shoes at them, these little people. <laughs> and then the ones that, that are like three feet, we're, you know, we're out the door, we're going to be in the lightest area as possible. And those were the ones that tap on windows also. Those little, little three foot walls. guys, are they nocturnal hunters? Yeah. Okay. They, they're the ones that um, uh, cause havoc also, those three foot ones. You think they, they might be responsible for some of the missing person cases around the country? They, I would say that one would be a culprit rather than the big ones. Mm-hmm. Well, if you think about it, I mean, them. even if they are three feet tall, if there's a bunch of them, they could still stomp you pretty easy. Yeah. There was one, I was coming back from uh, the local uh, city uh, down here, Farmington, and uh, going west on a on a back road. And that's where, where I live, on that back road, so... I was going home and here um, right below as I got out of the outskirts of that uh, city <clears throat> I went around a bin and I seen two little white ones they jumped the, the, the rail the guardrail and disappeared and as I kept on going I didn't really think nothing of it and then I seen another one right there walking and that jumped over the guardrail and so and I was like, whoa, you know, these Anasazis are out. Wow. Um, just thought about it, and then I I went about maybe uh, an eighth of a mile in my truck, and here I, I heard a, I seen a, a lady walking on the road. And I stopped right right by her, and then she kind of, I, I kind of scared her, you know, and said, hey, you know, get in, you know. And then she says, why? I said, there's some things, something following you she God. jumped in real fast and um that's when it whistled and she says all this time i was walking out of the out of the city you know this this i kept hearing this whistle whistling right behind me and it kept coming closer and closer where was it he said and i say about maybe an eighth of a mile and she's like you know her looked at me with real big eyes and all all scared and we took off from there God. I took her, you know, back to her, back to her house. Let her go, and then it continued back, back home. And she is That's... like really lucky that you wandered by and were paying attention. Yeah. And I told her about it, and you know, just either you know, get in, or you know, you're gonna walk off because that's <laughs> what she was gonna do, at first. She you knew, practically was... do that famous line from Terminator: "Come with me if you want to live." <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah. my god well those little people creep me out man what do you what do you uh what do you think they are and what is your i guess two several questions here what do you think they are and what does your culture say they are um in the evolution of the navajo there were things there were creatures on here um, on the face of this earth. See, we came from four different levels of evolution. And right now we're on the, the fourth world. That's where, you know, we've been for thousands of years now. But before then, it was uh, not too clear. Everybody was kind of like uh, just wandering around. Mm-hmm. Before then... It was just mainly birds and bees and whatnot. And then the, they call it the dark world, which, you know, is just only reptiles and certain animals and all of that. That's the way it's explained. So right now, some say we're on the fifth world, but they call this the glittering world. When we came up, when we started to uh, kind of uh, mosey around, then we we started to find certain people that were still that 
or were already living here. That's the way that um, it's explained to us and then the, how the oral traditions, how the oral teachings go. And uh, that's, that's, you know, one thing that uh, I always think they're, they were the ones that were, they're here before man. And they were, you know, just part of nature. Mm -hmm. They, they weren't um, brought up by man or, you know, there's no breeding by man or anything. They were here. That's right. the way that uh, Navajo oral traditions talk about. It sounds like if you uh, compare it to other um, local cultural legends and myths from around the world, there's pr practically every place you go, they've got stories about these little people. And yet, once again, just like Bigfoot, nobody wants to take it seriously. Oh, ha, ha, there's little people. They don't exist. Uh, how do you know? You know, uh -huh. absence isn't evidence. Uh, and absence of evidence isn't evidence. But... Uh, <clears throat> There's plenty of oral traditions that say these things are real. And, uh, you know, it just kind of makes me wonder how the hell do they fit into the whole scheme of things? Obviously, I guess if they're, if it came out that there was these teeny tiny diminutive humanoids, uh, you know, call them pixies, pixies or fairies or sprites or whatever name you want to give them, um, it would completely blow the uh, theory of evolution to hell because here's something that doesn't fit into their whole scheme of, uh, you know, long ages of evolution, tiny changes over long periods of time. And uh, we, what, you know, we are the end product of anthropoid evolution. That's why they're the only uh, two-legged ape-like creatures walking around on two legs on the planet right now. Uh, you know, if either Bigfoot or a teeny little fairy pops up, that pretty much bursts the bubble on that whole idea. So, you know, uh -huh. I can see why they'd want to cover it up and everything. But again, it's just like, uh, it boggles my mind, you know, and I can see again with little people <laughs> way easier to hide than Bigfoot because they're little. And yeah. uh, we've actually got evidence for little people. Unlike Bigfoot, we've got skeletons. And of course, I'm talking about the Hobbit over in uh, on the other side of the planet there on the islands where, uh, you know, they had unearthed a whole bunch of them. They got their skeletons from them, little three foot tall people. And now they found uh, evidence remains of them from elsewhere, proving that they weren't just on that one little island, that they had actually uh, gone way, way further than that. So again, then what makes you think that they didn't just spread all over the world? They're not all over the place. Um, uh -huh. It's just uh, some of the thinking with the so-called science community really makes me question if they have a good grasp on what logic is. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, I always say Science is just a guess also. You know, I just... Uh, Science is really... the horror of their agenda. <laughs> yeah. And lawyers so, are just yeah, politicians just... in larval form. There's your, <laughs> there's your wise words of the day. <laughs> <laughs> lawyers yeah. are just politicians in larval form. No, I'll give you guys a real one. Here's the real words of the wisdom for today, and take this to heart. The world is run by those who show up. That may sound simple, but it isn't. Anyway, back to the little people again now. Um, you don't have legends for the little, little ones that are like a foot tall or a foot and a half tall, but you do have stories about the three footers. So you think those little guys migrated in from somewhere else and like fairly recently is basically what you're saying? Yeah. And yeah. Majority, they, see, we, we didn't really have a lot, really a lot of encounters like the encounters I'm talking about. We didn't, right. See, everybody has an encounter here in the, the town of Shiprock or surrounding areas, the mountains, the Navajo Nation, all around where these reservations are. Um, the way that I think about it, they, they, they were, some were here just a little bit, but it was mainly the ones that we could see. Mm -hmm. Every once in a one once every five years. 
some somebody would see one or it would uh come to the house but it started to go way up high on encounters ever since that uh mountain i think it was mount saint helens that exploded oh really yeah that's interesting that's probably what in the 90s you no know, that was uh Early 80s, if I remember right, I was backpacking around the West the same summer that happened. Should have been like 81, 82, 80, somewhere in there. Yeah, something like that. That's when we started to get uh, a lot more down here. It didn't happen right, like overnight or anything. Right. They gradually, gradually came in, started uh, um, having encounters with people down here. And... Um, some stayed while the other ones went again and all of that went going through the mountains being safe or whatever they're wandering for and they did from what i hear now through other people like bear and kumbo they're down in texas way down you know even the fox monster you know all the way down even the uh, skunk ate down in florida mm -hmm. You know, like that, they, they, there was just maybe 10%, uh, maybe 30%, I would say, that were, you know, all in the lower areas of the North American continent. Mm -hmm. But then ever since that thing exploded and there's a whole bunch down this way and coming down, coming down, and then they made their living all over the U.S. now. Yeah. Some went east. That's just... That's just how, you know, uh, nature works. It just equals everything. So basically, it almost sounds like they probably had some kind of a subterranean civilization that was near there. The eruption and all of that completely ruined it, and they had to get the hell out of there and find new places to live. Yeah. And yeah, with their diminutive size, it would take a long time to move that far. But I could see it happening. It's, yeah. You know, that's just... Uh, it's just weird. Why didn't they move to Wyoming where their relatives were? <laughs> <laughs> we could keep them safely contained in an area with very few humans. We wouldn't have to interact with them or worry about them too much. Yeah, and we'd all be happy. <clears throat> if you if you were to, you know, just just hypothetically, if you were to compare that to uh, the the gorillas in the Congo, you know, really, there's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. So they stay in one place. And then if there was a volcano or something like that, I bet you them gorillas would migrate all the way up to where? Probably Sri Lanka or something like that, <laughs> just to get away from there. Yeah. And like that. But they won't really uh, um, care where they live, just as long as they're comfortable. Yeah. And where how they lived, they would try to accommodate that also. And then it just seems that, you know, the native is the one that can tolerate just about anything. <laughs> so, okay, we'll, we'll visit him. He won't mind. He'll just get scared. <laughs> Put a blanket over his face or something like that. <laughs> he won't really shoot, you know. <laughs> so it, it, it's something like that, you know. It's, so I, I, I look at, at that, you know. The, we, we used to never really hear about them until you know about that time and like you said like somewhere in the 80s mm -hmm. i was growing up then a teenager then the early 80s so then you know that's that's when you know it it was a special visit that's the way we thought about it yeah it, then in that way you never hardly see anything in the encounter so then that way it was made spiritual you were visited by something that's not human. Right. So it's probably uh, a deity. In that way, it's it's looked at it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting if they were just a mythical creature, you would not expect the kind of reports that we're getting to actually be happening, where places that people have never experienced these things before are starting to have them. I mean, that to me sounds more like something real has left one area and is moving into another one and people are encountering it for the first time. 
Uh -huh. So, you know, it's it's like, why would you have no reports of these little people in an area for God knows how long, hundreds of years, and all of a sudden everybody's seeing them? I yeah. mean, to me, that points to this <clears throat> isn't some sort of hallucination. People aren't making it up. There's actually something there. They're seeing it. They don't know what the hell it is, and they're just uh -huh. trying to report it the best they can. And, you know, we're getting a little short on time here, but before we go, um, let's go to the opposite end of the size spectrum here we just got done talking about the little people um what, what does your culture say about the giants they the giant the main one that people um in the legend say it was a cannibal and it always stole children and it always uh took away females now, what, what did your giants look like? Were they like, I know a lot of the tribes in North America to say that the giants um, that they were fighting with, again, were cannibals, had uh, white skin and red hair. The one that we um, have was just, 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 just native looking. Okay. But it didn't really have a lot of hair. And, but, it, but it was giant size that we're talking Yes, we're, like we're as big talking... as the Bigfoot that are living up in the mountain, the big, big, big foots. Uh, yeah, the eighteen footer. And yeah, the, yeah. You know, bigger. We're somewhere around there, twenty to maybe two stories high. Jesus. Yeah, you know, that'd be just. Uh, <laughs> I can't even imagine having to try and deal with critters like that when you've got real basic primitive technology and they want to eat you. My God, you know, I'd be spending a lot of time setting up traps to kill those bastards just you know, <laughs> as a matter of course. You've got to get rid of them because they're trying to eat us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one thing that um in, in the legends, um, uh, they say that there were all all types of monsters yep. that were around, you know, that some would fly and then some would be walking around. And, you know, it's just like dinosaurs and yeah pterodactyls we got the same thing in the christian religion too the time before the flood it was you know lots of chaos weird chimeras and hybrid animals all over the place the giants were running the world it was just you know chaos all over the damn place um you know it sounds like you're you're describing pretty much the same thing how was that um changed over to the way things are now what what brought an end to it um a lot of it had to do with a lot of the, the wars that had gone on, you know, when um, the white settlers came in, there was a lot of chaos. Yeah. So if if I didn't want to get shot, I want to stay out of the way. Well, no, no, I'm talking about like earlier when there were monsters and chimeras and giants and stuff running around. Uh, I, you know, we white people can't claim credit for killing them off. When we got here, they were gone. You guys had already mm -hmm. done it somehow. <laughs> the, there's um there's a a, a a legend story on that one you know there's the there, there, it's called a um, hero twin story mm -hmm. and that one um, these two uh, hero twins they're like uh, put it put it one way Perseus and Hercules okay so they're demigods exactly they were born like that. Okay. And those were the ones that uh, started killing them off because it, these monsters, these giants weren't, uh, you know, the, the men, the human human people weren't too effective against them. No. So they had these demigods do it for them. Right. And then they killed them off. Some were taken towards the north. And they were, in other, in other words, they were exiled towards uh -huh. the north uh, from the Navajo land. They were taken north all the way uh, to where the trees reached the skies and where there's snow-capped mountains all the time. <laughs> and across... Um, uh, there's, there's, there were people with them too. So, what do you yeah. think? Like British Columbia, Alaska? How far north do you think they pushed them? 
They pushed him all the way. Some of them, uh, they put him as far as where the, the, the ice had, um, the water froze on the mountains, which Glaciers. meant Alaska. Yeah. And, and then, and you know the where big, I hear about the majority of the mountain giant sightings coming from? I'll give you three guesses. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's Alaska. That's where you hear most of the sightings from mountain giants coming out of is Alaska. And here's a legend from your people saying that, yeah, there was this big war. These demigods kicked their butts and chased them up to where? Alaska. Yeah. A lot of them were um, killed around here. Good. And, um, to, you know, never to be found or anything like that. Yeah. And then also, you know, there's there's places that represent the final battle to it, you know, which is the south of me, way down south. There's, you know, in, like I said, the four sacred mountains that the Navajos live within. Mm -hmm. um, the south mountain is famous for that one, where the famous battle took place. And um, they, um, that was the last one. And that was the, the meanest one that was out there. That one was like maybe two stories high. Jesus. And um, that happened and that was it. And then there was some that, you know, that's that's that explained nature and stuff like that. But for these uh, big ones, these big hustings that were around, the majority of them were killed off and then uh, never to come back. But within that, was the prophecy which said they will come back when the people start to go in chaos again. Oh, crap. And then those will be the ones to clear their their whole thing, like to say, ah, oh, you guys chased me out. Now you guys doing the same thing, so it won't matter. Now I'll live with you and eat you. Mm -hmm. Like that. Well, wonderful. That's prophecy you know? goes. So basically, you know, we can uh, blame uh, the last few presidents for bringing this down. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about Bush, Clinton, and Obama. <clears throat> it's their fault. If you didn't buy a giant, remember whose fault it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that actually creeps me out because I get insider information a lot. And, you know, I, I surf the web and look for some of these stories from reputable uh para news agencies that put out some really weird stuff and generally there's at least a kernel of truth to it and that's yeah that's what a lot of the rumors are right now that they've found where some of these hibernation chambers underground are for some of these giants and they're actually waking them up trying to control them and use them for weapons for the military well yeah. it, duh huh. yeah that's gonna work out it's... well how well did that work out <laughs> last time yeah that worked out really well that's like saying a child goes back, a, a, child, a poor child goes back, goes to their, their parents and saying, okay, I want you to buy me uh, this Xbox and also a G.I. GI, GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Awesome. I demand it. That's like the military saying that to these giants. And then what does the parent say? No. We don't have no money for it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do it as you demand, you know. Yeah. You are my child, and that's the way it is. That's the way I see it with these uh, the, the new awakenings of these giants that they, they started seeing. You know, it's just that we can't, we can't, you know, try to control them mm -hmm. and try and say, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to have these super human people, you know. There's yeah, wouldn't it be great America. to have some of these giant guys <laughs> on our side to carry giant weapons around and stuff, you know? You can carry yeah. a hoots around his back, sure, it's awesome. Uh, you know, I can see why they might think that was a good idea, <clears throat> but they're sort of dealing with power <laughs> they can't control. Uh, we, already, we already have the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, isn't the Hulk bad enough, for God's sakes? <laughs> Let's yeah. not create more monsters. <laughs> and then they decided they decided they didn't like Godzilla invading Japan all the time to eat their nuclear power plants. So they decided.